So we record, we live? Yeah, we're live. What up, this is the Ruby? <laughs> I think it's blurry. Nope. I can't tell. No, yeah, I can never tell because that little fucking stick's in the middle. Oh, wait. Yeah, the camera's been making me feel small. Huh? Camera's made me feel like I don't go to the gym. <laughs> That's how I just to Testing, testing. You gotta double check, cause last time, Dog, boy, done messed up. Oh. Remember when we worked out and I was like, "Oh, bro, don't fucking worry, I got three batteries. All three of them were dead. All three of them died, bro." Oh god. <laughs> but hey, bro, we're not working out. We're in comfortable clothes. Uh -huh. I'm, in, I'm in workout clothes still, though. Are you finna go work out after this? No. Uh. No. You said it Friday. You know, we don't work out on Fridays. You don't work out on Fridays. I got that working this morning, baby. You got that dog in. That dog. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sound like Charlie. Oh, for real, bro. Nah. <laughs> All right, y'all. Welcome back to the This Is Therapy podcast. I'm your host, Samuel Colisa. We have my longtime friend, K Biggie. Chris Big. Bigums, big life, big moves, big ham. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, your parents gonna watch this? Watch out! No, <laughs> no, bro. Okay, we're getting focused. We're not. Yeah, we might take that part out. Oh yeah, no, we're not. I don't edit. Yeah, he don't edit. That's no, what I'm trying don't. to get him to do. Yeah. If you think he should edit, leave a comment down below for real. No, nah, bro. I need. If, actually, if you think I should edit. Comment down below a person that edits so I could just hit them up so they can edit my videos. Bro, I'll edit your videos. I no, told you, you this. I told you this. No, you what do you think I do up there in Wyoming? Nothing. Way old? Oh. That's it. Yeah. I'm going to edit them. You Would just got to pay me, though. Like $100 an hour. So, yeah, that's the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, bro. Actually, I'm glad you brought up Wyoming. How do you, how do you like Wyoming? Actually, before we even go there, let's tell the people who we are, how we know each other. Where right. we like we gotta go back to freshman junior year. Yeah, it was my fr freshman year. I was going from eighth grade to it was that summer, eighth grade yeah. to freshman year. And I was a junior, right? I think you were going to be a junior. Yeah, sophomore. Did we meet in the summer? Or going we met into in the summer from cross country practice. All right. I thought I just did. I really don't remember you. All the, at the time I remember you, and the time I started like actually liking you is when you beat me. <laughs> Uh, fucking uh, Harry Myers. I was like, damn, this kid kind of good. Well, not because yeah, I remember I got varsity that year because mm -hmm. I was cooking. Well, because I my parents, you know them. Nah, yeah, the big ones. Dude. The they big be, ones, bro. They literally, they literally run triathlons. How old are your parents? My dad's sixty four. My 60. mom's like in her mid fifties, and she just did an ultra marathon, thirty one yeah. miles. How many? 31, dude. 31 miles, and then two months later, she ran a marathon. Yeah, just for the fun. Just for the fun. She was like, eh, I'm already conditioned. I might as well just. Yeah, she didn't even really train. Either. Yeah. And it's like, it's kind of impressive, but it's kind of annoying sometimes. Dude, like, it's, honest, it's extremely annoying. Cause I, I honestly hate talking all. to your mom sometimes. I'm just like, damn, must be fucking nice. And you don't got knee pain? Huh? Make it make sense. Yeah. You're like 20, 24? Yeah. You said your friends think you're 25? Yeah. I, I'm an OG, I was trying to though. throw you. I'm an OG, I was looking for the punch if you said 25. <laughs> no, but you already be feeling like you're 70. No, you're yeah. Not. I feel that, Bro, too. you saw me and your dad doing hip workouts today. Oh, for real. <laughs> yeah. He brought out some bands. I was like, oh, yeah, we getting for real. All right. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> we hit the fucking ground. He started showing me. He showed me a new one that I haven't seen. And I'm looking for the new one when we go upstairs. And for y'all that don't know, the reason I don't sit like this is because this hurts my hip. So that's why I sit like this. Because someone commented, someone told me, like, it looks like I'm being, like, what is the word? Feminine? No, not not that, like, <laughs> that. But, uh, Like, I'm better. Like, I'm higher up. Like, I'm just. What's wrong with that? I mean, I am. But, like, I'm not trying <laughs> to look like that. <laughs> but, no, yeah, that's why I sit like this is because. I will tear my hip limit limit. What's that word? Ligament. Ligaments. I will tear my hip ligament if I sit like that for too long. So I have to sit like this. So yeah. But freshman year, we're running cross country. Yes, sir. We meet. Best of pal sense, inseparable. Pretty much, we're, we've gone through it. We've been uh, through it in relationship wise. No, literally, we, this is like my so, longest bromance. 
Yeah. Like, and we've had moments where we're just like not friends, we, not talking. We broke up, had a break. <laughs> yeah, we had we had a couple breaks, but we're strong. No, yeah. What does it kill you makes you stronger? Yep. That's facts. Because we've feel, changed a lot. No, literally. I feel like our friendship has grown as well as we've grown. I feel like we learn how to talk to each other. Yeah. And like when we are like in our mood, we're like, all right, give me some space. And then this is how I can come to you and talk to you. Yep. And I feel like even at that, we also know whenever it's like, I might want some space, but you're like, shut the fuck up. Stop being a bitch. Get up. Yeah. You don't need space. Well, I think it's, we're both very emotional people. So when oh, things piss you off, it's to the max. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's always in the middle. And so not many people, I feel like, are like that. They just, a lot of people don't have emotions anymore. No, yeah. But it I feel like weird. we're overly emotional sometimes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it's not good sometimes. <laughs> Why am I crying right now? No, yeah, <laughs> literally the sunset. I see a sunset. I just start tearing up. Like, God, 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 so yeah. God, so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> no, literally, especially in Wyoming, you be sending me pictures, well, bro. I was gonna say, I need you need to see that one, the sunset on your screensaver. Oh yeah, I will put it. I might, hey, I might make that the Edit fuck the yeah. first picture, right, right, right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, bro, but I feel like it's just good. Like, there's not too many friendships that like. Especially with guys, you can yeah. grow with each other, and then like you could just cry in front of each other, open up in front of each other. We've gone from like literally talking about just girls, talking about sports, to talking about the Bible, to talking about like going to sleep in one conversation. Oh yeah, and then we'll repeat that conversation like two, three days later. Yep, and it's just it's a I don't know. It helps me because like we were saying Wyoming because I was going to college after. I mean, we well. We'll, we'll keep the story going first because yeah. we did high school mm -hmm. and then we were only in high school two years and then you left. Yeah, I went to Iowa. Eve, see, we were in different states, bro, in our relationship. We we're doing long distance and our relationship <laughs> still <laughs> lasted, bro. Most of the most relationships have been together for a decade. They, they break up after one year of long distance. Yeah. We were two years long distance and we still held that shit. Well, because you did Iowa, ran yeah. track there. Yeah. And then I came down for a year. And but then you live West Texas, though. Oh, no. Yeah, I didn't even come down for a year. I did go to West Texas. I forgot that. So that was like another long distance. He, he knows me you, so well. If you're from Texas, you know there's practically more states in Texas. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good five hours away. Yeah, that's basically. insane. So we went to what? I, I, we, I went to West Texas. We were still kicking it. We are still talking. I think that, that was kind of a... Time I was in high school. Still. Yeah. I feel like that time... That's what you think, got in your phase. Of yeah, college. I don't think we were talking too much at that no. point. Nah, I was I was partying hella hard at that time. Yeah, it was different because you yeah. you got that age advantage on me. So I yeah. at one point got to that stage. Yeah, but in high school I was like, what is this dude's problem? Yeah. I was always getting so <laughs> mad about it, and you were like, let me live my life. <laughs> <laughs> because it's funny because it's like when you, sorry, OCD, but it's like it's funny because like. That's one. That was one phase of our friendship. We had to grow with each other, and I feel like we had. A, I think we fought a little bit, and I was just like, "Oh, bro, he's just a vibe kill." I'm like, "What the fuck? He doesn't." Yeah, I really didn't like you for a sec. No, yeah. Well, it, it, well, what happened after West Texas? You came back. It was like my senior year, and we go to. Uh, yeah. Oh wow! I don't yeah. even know if I've been talking in the mic this. Nah, whole time. I, I picked it up a little bit, but it's good. Um, but it was you came back from West Texas. Yeah. And then it was when me, you, Brayden, yeah, went to Angel Fire. Mm -hmm. We started beefing during there COVID. again. That was during COVID. That was yeah. After it, was, it was during COVID because we had started working out mm -hmm. in the backyard. So the backyard workouts had commenced. Uh huh. And then we went there midsummer. And then I think we were just fed up with each other because we were with each other every day. Yeah, for COVID. like twelve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you have more to say? No, I mean, oh where no, was it going with that? but like. Before that, no, we skipped a major part. Which part? Fucking went around. Well, I was in West Texas. You were in high school. What was I doing? Oh, no, that was COVID. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, that was COVID. Damn, I'm shitty with time. And then I did come back crazy. for I went to Colin for a little bit. Uh -huh. And then that's when we went to New Mexico with Brayden. Yep. And then yeah, that's when we got in a fight uh, in New Mexico. Well, we, we also got in a fight because we went rock climbing and whitewater rafting. So Dude, that was such a long day. It was a horrible day. And oh. then you just started yelling at me. Bro, car. I was tired. Like, if y'all don't know me, if I, I'm, I'm very emotional. So if I don't get sleep, and we weren't sleeping that much because we were out, 
we're up playing Madden. Oh, no, yeah, you we and Brady, Madden tournaments, bro. Dude, you and Brady, we see, I'm old as fuck. You and Brady be up <laughs> all night playing Madden, and then y'all come bother me. I'm like, bro, please, just let me sleep. And then the next day, I think we woke up early, had like a two-hour drive to Colorado, fucking in the heat. Yeah, on the in side the of heat. a mountain, just hanging there, like, and then we're just getting baked, <laughs> like, by the sun. Yeah. And it's just like. And then we go into some freaking cold water. Yeah, was we were not in a good mood. No, nah, dude. Well, that it, was we were hangry too. Yeah, and yeah. they gave us some little fucking little tiny ass yeah, taco. Little tacos, size of my finger. Like, yeah, ah, uh, dude, that was a funny day. Good Kinda. pictures though. We got some good pictures. We got some good pictures. Uh, but that was the first time me and him almost fought. No, yeah, and I think see that was a very important moment in our relationship because that was the first time like we fought, but we fought over the phone, and it was just like okay, whatever, yeah. and then we just don't talk, and then when we we're chill, one of us reach out. But uh, what? Nothing. Did someone walk? No. You just uh, looked. Oh, fucking! You look like you're looking over there. Scared no, the shit I out of me. I looked at you. You said, "Scared the fuck out of me." I was just listening. Oh, sorry. I, I, I'm not used to people giving me eye contact. <laughs> I was like, "What the hell is behind me?" But no. Um. But yeah, that was like one of the first times we had an actual argument, and not like a, just a little disagreement. We had an actual argument, and <laughs> Dude, that turn, bro. You know. <laughs> bro, I was just scared. Loki, Loki hurt my neck. <laughs> I was like, what, what's happening, man? <laughs> Loki got whiplash. No, we, we almost got into it. Like no, saying, yeah. That was, and it was in person. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, usually it's over the phone and it's just like, all right, if we get mad, I, I just won't talk to him for like a couple weeks. And whenever I'm ready, I'll talk to him or likewise. But that was the first time, like, it was an in person argument. So we had to sell it, settle it right then or there. But I don't think we did. I think we drove back in quiet. No, it was cute because we were oh, we we're so hungry and we we're driving back and you're like, Sam, you want food? I'm like, no, I don't feel like paying. And you're like, I got you. I'm like, can See? I get a McChicken? <laughs> oh, bro, that was beautiful. I remember that. I remember we, we got like, a, I think we got like 80 oh, chicken nuggets. nuggets. Yeah, we got I like 80 chicken like, nuggets. For a second, I was like, what is this dude talking about? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We got like 80 chicken nuggets. I knew you we were hangry. Yeah. It's like that Snickers commercial. You're not you when you're hungry. <laughs> if I don't get sleep or food, bro, please don't talk to me. Yeah, that one was intense. But especially in like this generation, I feel like nobody settles their issues in yeah. relationships. It's just always like one bad thing happens, all right, I'm done. Exactly. Anything. Fr- Friendships, relationships, whatever. Everything. I feel like we ate, got home, chilled a little, and then we talked about it, and it was just like, all right, bro, I love you. And we hugged it out. Yep. And then we moved on. Damn, yeah. bro. And then what happened after that? I went to college. Yeah, you went to a and And then you started your party season. Yeah. And I was coming out of my party season. You came down for a few of them. Though. Yeah. For the first semester. Yeah, your first semester out there. Yeah. And those were some rage. Ah, those were crazy. We had some good times. Yeah, those were crazy. But I did not last that long in the party scene. I hated it. I hate Compared intense. to me, no, you didn't. No. It was a good, like, two years, one, yeah. two years. Well, maybe. Yeah, yeah it was. you count that to. But my parties also weren't ridiculous. Normally, no, it was yeah, like yeah. me, Brayden. It was more like big kickbacks, chill kickbacks. Yeah. yeah. It was chiller kickbacks. But, I mean, when you came down, we went to some parties. Nah, yeah. We had some good time. Fucking bear pong. Oh, yeah. We were dude, running nah, all the time. Dude. They'll get us behind a bear park table. We honestly, we need Brad to and Chad. Brad and Chad, bro. <laughs> Kyle Bauer. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anyone's name. Kyle, or what else? But no, it was cool. It was just because. But then, like, I remember at one point, I was thinking, I was just like, it kind of brought me back to. I was like, I feel like this is what Chris felt like whenever I was partying, and he would see me, and he was like, "Bro, what is this dude doing?" Like, yeah, he like he has so much potential. Why is he partying? But then at the same time. For me, it was like I just got out of that scene, and so I know how like it is fun. Like don't get me wrong, partying it's fun, but like, and you're you're three years three years younger than me. And it's, everybody coming out of high school, they just want to party. Yeah, exactly. So that's why I was just like, I don't fucking care, bro. Like he's young, he's gonna party. Like, I'd rather you do it now than me be on your butt. And then four years later, whenever you're in the middle of a job, you're doing coke. Yeah, that would not be good. I just burped hard as fuck. Sorry. But no, yeah. So that's what I was just like for me. I think, and once again, since I'm older, I'm just like, this is just another phase in his life. Everything you, everything I see you do, I'm like, at one point in my life, I did that. So it was like ignorant of me to try to stop you from doing that. And I think it's so bad. I Maybe because I'm not a parent, so I don't have that much emotional attachment. But I hate when parents are like, don't make this mistake. While I'm like, 
no, go fucking make that mistake. I think that's a very important part. Yeah, because I'm like, you need to make that mistake. So that's how, because that's the only way you're going to learn not to do it again. Yeah, because if people don't tell you to do it, there's going to, most of the time when you're told not to do something, that's what makes you want to do it. Exactly, bro. <laughs> so until you actually do it and you pay the consequences, you ain't yeah. learning nothing. Exactly. What do you think you learned the most from like the party scene and like the people from A&M? Well, in my time at A&M, well, at first I went to Blend. I was going because oh, I was true. originally going to go yeah. to UNT, and then COVID was hitting, and they like raised the price. Did and they? I was like, yeah. Oh, sure. And I was like, mm, now with COVID, because like we're not even going in person. Like yeah. it's all going to be online. So I went to Blend and got into A and M. Once I was in A and M, or actually towards the Blend A and M time frame, I got a job at the bar, and mm-hmm. that's what got me out of the party scene. Yeah, because <laughs> I'll do it. That was different. Seeing people, and I realized then it was a very negative addiction because I would see a lot of older people there every single day parting with, like, college kids. And I'm like, dude, you're in your late 20s, early 30s trying to take home, like, a freshman in college. Like, yeah. chill out. Yeah. <laughs> and then it would be, like, every day. They would just come back. And I remember I'd be standing at the end of the bar. These girls would come up to me, and they'd be like, cuss me out f you your bitch like w- saying all sorts of stuff just to me and i'd be mm-hmm. like what's going on and they were just like some bouncer probably kicked out their boyfriend earlier probably thrown mm-hmm. up being drunk and then they'd go take it out on me and i'm just like all right i'll see you tomorrow and then she comes back drunk tomorrow and i'm like this is horrible yeah and then all these kids just swiping daddy's credit card buying thousands of dollars Dude. of drinks for girls and then you can spend some money in the bar. Oh yeah, and that's even, the even though when it's like the like thirsty Thursday and yeah. it's like two dollar shots, you could blow through a hundred dollars in two dollar shots pretty quick. Well, then you almost spend more because you think it's gonna be cheaper. Exactly, and then it catches up to you. You're like, wow. what the fuck? <laughs> I used to not look at my bank account the next day. Yeah, I wouldn't blame you. Nah, dude, fuck that shit. But continue. Sorry, <laughs> oh, forgot what I was about to say. It was um. There's the people doing the constant, like, addiction to it. The kids spending all the money. And it was just, I don't know. It was not a good, oh, how expensive it is. You could just yeah. go to the gas station, buy, like, a toy rack, and hang out with the exact same people you're going to hang out there at home. The risk of the cops go away. You can actually have fun. It ain't stressful. Dude, when somebody tells me I'm going out, I'm like, you didn't give me a two weeks notice. <laughs> right? <laughs> I got a shipping date, okay? I need to get packed up. I need to get ready. I need to get mentally ready, dude. I got to think about my outfit for that day. I got to think if I'm even going to go, to be honest. That's really it. Yeah. My outfit, I don't care. If I'm going, that's what. That's the, yeah. that's the judge. Ah, <laughs> oh, dude. It really is, though, because it's just like, you hit on a key point, like, I don't know I don't know what's the drive. Or, like, whenever I went out, I was going out because I was running away from stuff. Yeah. So whenever I see people, I'm like, so what are you running away from? And they're like, nothing. And I'm, I'm like, so why are you going out? I think it's an attention thing. Like people like want there, the attention. Yeah, there has to be something out there. And I'm not shaming anyone. If you want to go out, go out, obviously. Yeah. But for me, it's just like, you're going out to hang out with your friends. You're going to go pay, you and your friend group, probably a good $30 worth of shots. You can go to fucking, uh, what's that shit Specs. called? Specs. Get a thirty dollars tequila bottle. Go home. You probably already have a speaker at your house. Someone has a speaker in their friend group. Put that home in the living room. If you have a Roku TV, attach it to the Roku TV. Put on some YouTube. Watch some music videos. And turn up in the house. To me, that is more fun. That is ten times more fun because it just takes all the stress away. Because they're like, you need a DD if you go out, and so you don't need a DD if you stay home. What like you don't? Everyone just anymore. crashed there. And most of the time, you're hanging out. When you go out, you're going to hang out with the exact same group of people. Exactly. Unless you're going out to, like, a nice restaurant, and then you go to some nicer bars, but just kind of, like, strictly partying, it's just, mm-hmm. like, that's different. That's unreal. Nah. I really, like, that's something, like, it's, I don't want to say it's a red flag, but, like. Oh, it's a red flag to me. I'm not even going to lie. I don't want to say it's a red flag, because, like, once again, everyone has to go through that phase and then grow true. out of that phase. But, but for me. It's the red flag when they don't grow yeah, up. Yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's also, I feel like it's also your responsibility to like, what is it? Um, 
kind of like figure out that, who that person is when you're mm-hmm. dating casually dating them be like all right is this a person that goes out i don't like it there's no point of us continuing this um casual dating might as well just cut it off right but it's hard because then you have the idea like oh they'll just grow out of it but then it's like six months into a relationship and they're going out every weekend and it's like mm. sorry yeah but then like they're going out every weekend and it's just like bro come on now what the fuck are you doing yeah it's definitely interesting and i mean you see i think what's interesting our our age group looks at alcohol and all that stuff it's not a big deal it's not a big deal that i go do all this and like the culture of relationships nowadays has changed completely yeah everybody's just hoeing around yeah. it's completely different than like our parents but you still see it happening at our parents age like drunk or divorces related to alcoholism or like drunks it's horrible and then you talk to somebody that was an alcoholic and they, they just look at alcohol like it's the worst drug no, yeah. ever and then our age group doesn't realize that now because it's fun and then you get down the line and you're like well i just drank my whole life away yeah it's fun until it's not fun yeah really. and some people just don't grow out of it and i think what's dangerous the reason i consider it a red flag is our our generation's different. I feel like they kind of, they think everything's going to kind of happen like this for the rest of their life. What do you mean by that? I don't think, like, there's a lot of people that don't realize, I mean, that was one thing I didn't like about college. It's like a, you go to college and it's like a false world to me. Yeah. Like everybody's, it's like, people think when you're in high school, college is the next step. But Mm -hmm. then you start seeing people, like, there's so many people in my class that are already pregnant and getting married Mm -hmm. or went to the military or trades, and they have legitimate careers. Mm -hmm. And then you look at the people in college, and they've just been partying. So it's like, who really grew up? Yeah. Like, college is like, that's the way you're supposed to go. But then when you look at it, it's like, all you do is go somewhere four years. Now you cheat on everything. Yeah. And you party with your friends. (laughs) And it's like, and then you go get a piece of paper, and you just dropped, like, six figures and it's like congratulations you wasted all your money and then you're gonna go get a job that's not anything near it and part of the problem is they were just drunk the whole time so they don't remember half the stuff they learned <laughs> if they learned anything sorry i'm gonna get comfortable <laughs> but no it's like that um that's why i feel like this generation will get stuck i feel like we're already stuck yeah that's why i that's why I took a leap of faith, dude. No, yeah, yeah. It was just like, I realized I was going nowhere and I was in, in that group. And when I was, when I was in A&M, I was in sports management. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to transfer to kinesiology, but, dude, I'm not a, I'm not a brain guy. No, yeah. I'm not good with books. And I think I was talking to Matt, and he was saying, you realize you're going to be like a med student. And I was like, shit, I can't be a med student. And I was like, well... My buddy Aaron was welding, and I'm like, I'm going to go weld. So talked to my parents about it, and right before my chemistry final, I applied to get into my welding school, and I was like, whatever happens, happens. And I did not pass that final, dude. I got like a 30. <laughs> did so you? I, yeah, dude. It was bad. <laughs> and so I got a 70 in the class, and I needed a B to transfer. But I had already applied and got accepted to the – the trade school over there so i was like okay whatever like i did not care at all because i was like i'm gonna go weld and so that second semester starts and i'm just like every class i go to they're like you're gonna build a resume and tell me why you want to be in this sports field and i'm like but i don't want to do that and i was telling my mom all this and it was funny because i started praying in october time frame again and my mom called me on last october 2022 all right and i was like god please tell me where you want my career to go? Because I was I was nervous, dude. I was just not I was not doing good mentally because I didn't know where I was going. Finally started doing that, and then my mom called me, and it was just like answered prayer. She was like, "Would you actually drop out to go well?" And I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> it took me a sec, and I was like, "This is happening." <laughs> I've always thought about dropping out, not really dropping out, kind of transferring career paths, but now I finally feel like I'm doing something, or I'll go do something. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I'm actually getting a career out of the whole after high school stuff. You feel like you're heading to that, like, adult phase that, like, we were told in high school type shit? Yeah. Like, I'm actually growing up. Like, college was just, like, felt like a sleepover, and everything was, like, not really perfect, but it was just, college just set me up bad. 
in my opinion. Like I was just not focused on the right stuff. And then when I was getting refocused, that now I'm like, all right, I see what's happening. What do you think helped you refocus? I think it literally just took my own mental switch. Like I it just took so much of me being like almost nervous about the future until I finally realized I need to get it together. And I think that's the key. A lot of people think like in relationships or um, in life, people like try to like, you'll hear your parents be like, you got to go do this. And until somebody themselves wants to do it, nothing's happening. They, sure. They're they not For changing sure. their mindset. And so it's like, you can go get with that toxic girl, but, and you can change her, but she's not changing. If she does not want to change, yeah. somebody can change, but it's their want. Okay. And so when I was wanting to find something different, I was like, um, just send it. Let's do it. And I found that thing and it just kept going. I'm like, sick. Took three years off my college too. Yeah. So that was, that was tight. But yours is, you know, that's a solid 100K. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't even, yeah. Paid like a small percentage of that to go do that and make more money. Because I was going into sports management. What type of money does that make, dude? Like, well, let's see if you get like LeBron as your agent or as your athlete. See, but that's hard because you got to go to law school to be a sports agent. Dead ass? Yes. You're dealing with contracts. People I guess lie. so, yeah. I don't know. I thought you just become a businessman or some shit. Oh, I thought the same thing. Yeah. But no. it does make sense. Damn. Yeah, dude. You would have to get a sports degree and then go to law school. If you want to be sports management or sports agent. agent. That's more money, too. More school, too. More school. Fine. More school to go play with the odds that you get yeah. a good athlete. Yeah. Because more than likely, you're going to be, like, with... Average. Yeah. Well, professional average. You're not going to, like, most of the time, you're not going to begin with some LeBron James yeah. athletes. You're going to begin, like, the sixth player on the bench type shit. Yeah. Fine. The more you know. So, at this time, we're in, uh, you went to Blinn, then you went to College Station. You figure out that's not for you. And then, during College Station, that's when you met, um, who's the dude that you, that like introduced you to welding? Aaron. Aaron. So, you met Aaron. Then, this is October time, your mom says, oh, all right. Well, no, yeah. so October was when, um, that's when I started praying again about yeah talking about the future and then it was december when i finally called my parents before that final mm -hmm. that i'm gonna um apply to welding school so i was going to welding school on that spring semester and college i was gonna do both yeah yeah i do remember that because you said you're gonna stay at a and and you're just gonna take welding classes and i was gonna i was gonna get my degree because my goal would be to open up my own welding business in the future so yeah. i wanted to know how to do it myself and weld and the way it was set up, all I'd have to do were like two welding classes a semester, and I'd get it all done at the exact same time. Yeah. But then, what was it, like February? Is that when you came back? It was January. January. Yeah. It was mid, it was Christmas break, and then I went back, and then it was that first week I was there, and then that Friday my mom called me, so it was late January. Late January. And then that's when you're like, oh, I'm full sending it. And I'm actually going, I'm dropping out of a and and going to, what is that shit called? Uh, welding school. Yeah. Pretty mm -hmm. much. My mom called me at like six in the morning, dude. I rolled over. I'm like, what's up? She's like, you want to drop out? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just sitting there and I was like, you know, this is one of those things when I'm older, I'll probably look back at this and be like, thank goodness yeah. I dropped out of school because hopefully I'm pretty successful at it that'd be cool but i left that day drove back up here to dallas um was there that whole friday and then saturday we had actually decided i was going to go to a school in ohio mm -hmm. and so i was telling everybody i'm going to ohio i'm leaving because what's even crazier about this whole thing was my mom called me friday and i was leaving tuesday I was just gone. We were like, no matter what school I go to, Tuesday, I'm coming back to Rockwall. And from Rockwall, we'll figure it out. Yeah. And so that went from me thinking I want to be with all my friends for like two and a half, three more years to like one, two, three, four days. All in a night. It was pretty crazy. Yeah. I was like, 
this is nuts. <laughs> but it like I went back, packed everything up, and then during that whole time in Ohio, they called me back on that Monday and they're like, Yeah, we can't get you until June. And I'm like, June? Like, damn it, it's not even it's Memorial Day weekend. I yeah. wouldn't have even have started. Yeah. And I'm almost done with this welding school. Yeah. So that's pretty crazy. And I was like, June, that would not work. And so I told my parents, and then they were like, you want to go to the Western Welding Academy? And I was like, I mean, <laughs> the one on TikTok, yeah, I'll go. I mean, I, they advertise good. People have problems with it, but I'm like, they're the only school that advertises. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to keep complaining, just do the same thing. <laughs> Why do people complain? Because they advertise on TikTok? They kind of make jokes about it. Like yeah. I think they think people coming out of the school are bad, but it's just like anything. It's like if you put the amount of work you put into something is what you're going to get out of it. For sure. And especially welding is pure, it's a skill. It's like the gym. You go to the gym, you get stronger, you're going to be lifting more. If you go weld, if you half-ass every day you're going to weld, you're not going to be welding good. But if you actually try, put effort, and learn it, you're gonna. it's going to be good. Yeah. And people, I think, in like white-collar aspects and like college, there's always rivalries, there's always trash talk. Yeah. And in blue-collar, everything kind of dies slower. So like a lot of this stuff is really – normal stuff that happens but it's just now getting over to blue collar where people are talking trash and stuff and i feel like they probably get a little bit more shit than most schools just because they are on tiktok Mm -hmm. and like blue collars like the old america muscle man like oh why you playing on the phone go pick up a hammer yeah type shit and people are also like they talk so much trash and all these like welders but if you look at it the school's three three years old Mm -hmm. Most that's of the, mo- new. that's new. Yeah. Most jobs want a minimum, like good jobs want yeah. three years. Yeah. Especially with welding. Most of the time you're going to be in a fab shop there, like until you get to that three years, unless you're really good, which that happens anywhere. Any school will have a really good welder mm-hmm. or like you'd be a young dude too, but it's like three years. There's no, but there's not been enough people to come out of that school to really dictate anything. The problem is people don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. But where are we at now? Keep going on rambles. Nah, nah. I mean, we're basically, where did you, so you found out that Ohio was it the move. Yeah. And your parents said, oh, do you want to go to Wester Welding? Yeah, and I didn't uh, know where it was at first. Yeah. And then I looked up Gillette, and it was in the, like, not even the middle of Wyoming. It's in, like, the northeast part of Wyoming, like an hour south of Montana and an hour west of South Dakota. And it's in the middle of nowhere. Gillette. The it's the called the power capital of the U.S., which is pretty crazy. It makes up like the coal beds there are insane. It makes up all the energy you use. So all these lights probably came like not the lights came, but like the power and stuff came from that tiny ass town, dude. How's probably. it not more like? I mean, I guess there's not a lot of people going into the coal business, so that's why it's not. I think it's kind of old family stuff. Like yeah. if your family was in it a long time ago, yeah, yeah. you're yeah. probably still in there and like. It's also big companies like yeah. Exxon, T-Mobile, those oil and gas companies. They'll go get, um, they'll go buy land. They got a lot of land in Odessa right now. Texas. Yeah, for like ten years, huh. they're doing pipelines out there. So yeah. that's opportunities. All right. Okay. So now at this time, where you've gone to, when did you go to Wyoming? Was it in like so early February? Pretty. Well, it was late January because. So my mom called me that Friday. I went home Friday, early Saturday, came back to College Station. And then I was going to leave that Tuesday, but it ended up raining. So I left the Wednesday, but really early that Wednesday. Came back. The next day, Thursday, we had drove um, Thursday to Angel Fire. Drove to mm-hmm. Angel Fire. And then I snowboarded Friday. And then I was going to snowboard Saturday and drive up the whole way Sunday because it was going to be no traffic. But then a huge snowstorm came in, and I was like, oh, snap. So I just went Saturday, and I drove halfway, drove all the way through Colorado, and then I stopped at Cheyenne, Wyoming, first day. And then the second day, I drove the rest of the way. But that second day, those highways were insane. It was just pure ice. I've never driven anything like that. I was, like, the only car on the road besides, like, some semi-trucks hauling stuff. But when they drove past, dude, you couldn't see for, like, the next 10 minutes. It was just snow everywhere. It was crazy. It was pretty terrifying, but made it. I lived. I lived. It's fine. Typical shit, yeah. And people say Texans can't drive in the snow. Look at this, man. Born and raised in Texas. Born and raised. You, you motherfuckers. 
Oh, yeah, old son. Um, stop looking over here. You're scaring the fuck out of me. I'm looking at the camera, dude. No. <laughs> All right. So, we're... And then, I just want to... See, one thing I've always liked about you, I feel like you've grown up faster. Because, like... You didn't say this, but your freshman year of college, you lived in an apartment yourself, by yourself. Yeah. And then, all, well, I mean, all through college, these last three years, you lived by yourself. Oh, so no, you said it was, you first year was me and Jordan. Well, it was uh, me, and then, and then Jordan came over. Jordan came. And then the second semester, I went with Brayden. And then. Oh, but then he went back to a and I mean. Galveston. Galveston, yeah. And then I moved in with Matt. Her. But. I was kind of living by myself, sort of. Basically. Because a lot of times, nobody was over. So, I, mean, I was just chilling. <laughs> and you did most of the cleaning and cooking. Oh, yeah, I did most of the stuff. <laughs> no shame, though. They weren't even there. I was mainly the main one. I know, I was looking over okay, there. Okay, I was something. like, bro, no, I'm not tripping. <laughs> well, that's because I think I'm hearing stuff. No, the TV's on. Oh, that's probably what I've been I'm like, what's going on? No, yeah, and I mean, Blessing's upstairs. Oh, for real? Yeah. Got you. Okay. Now I'm going to start looking upstairs. <laughs> now you're going to be like, is somebody crawling? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but like, yeah. I mean, you just had like a major shift, like going from freshman or um, senior during COVID, graduating as a COVID student, going to college by yourself, into a new city by yourself. Dude, at that time, was Braden in a college station or was he in Galveston? He didn't get to College Station until um, dang, until I got into A&M. So right. that whole first like year or two, it was just me. All I'm right. pretty sure. And then I don't remember because he was with Abby a lot. <laughs> basically, yeah. shout out Abby, but fuck you for taking our friend. For real. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah. I mean, you just like I don't know. I feel like I don't know if I could have moved in by myself at that time. French? Nah, there's no fucking way I would have survived. I would have, because, like, all I did was drink my freshman year. So, like, I definitely would have had trashed my apartment. I would have. I, mean, I, I ended up doing the same thing. It wasn't the cleanest. Nah. See, every time I came, it was pretty good. Well, I came into first semester. Yeah, so, nah, yeah. It was second semester was when I met Matt, and then we really partied for, like, a month. And then that was kind of it. I'm trying to give you your flowers, but never mind. I take them back. Huh? Oh, I mean, towards the end, my last year, oh, that thing was spotless. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, I grew up. <laughs> but then, it's after that party phase. Now, see, what you get out of that party phase is just like, let me do the dishes, man. Let me, let me get a plant. Let me water this. It's because you got nothing else to do. Exactly. Like, what, like, I oh, what am I gonna do? <laughs> <Yeah>. Just clean. <laughs> <laughs> you can't drink. You can't smoke. I mean, it's just like you can't, but like you just don't want to. Yep. You trying to go to bed on time, type of shit. Yep. I just fuck that shit. Up. But then. Then, like, within, what was it, like, two-week span, you went from A&M to Ohio to staying in Rockwell to moving to Wyoming. Yeah. Essentially. Pretty much. And then it was by late January I was there, and then I started February 6th. And so it's like a four, four-phase four program going over, like, structural welding, pipe welding, TIG welding, and then more uh, – stick welding but you go downhill um but pretty much i've went from like all that in february never welded before and now we're in may late may and i'm in the final phase so everything up to that i could do besides the like i'm besides the downhill stuff but that'll happen in like a month and then i'll be able to go get a career it's pretty crazy it's different that's pretty much three four months four months Oh, how long the program took or yeah. until? Four months. February, January, February, March, April, May, June. Oh, five months. Five months. So I'm about to graduate in a month early, which I wouldn't really want to graduate any sooner because that's a lot of money. You just kind of leave on the table for that for guy. Sure. Which. What guy? Just the dude that owns Oh, no. Like, <laughs> paying, so. I was like, what guy? Yeah, no, if you leave, he still gets your money. So it's like either. Get your money's worth or just give them free money. Respectfully. Now, if I get a job, though. Fuck it. It's kind of like a fair trade, kind of. How much, how close do you want it? Can you hear yourself? Yeah. But you can't hear it. Like, I want to hear, I want to hear you, bro. I want to hear you. 
Yo, pause. <laughs> <laughs> no pause. Oh, homo. You got socks on. Don't worry. No, yeah, we got socks on. <laughs> but, so, I want to, you said, um, like, in October, that's whenever you started diving into your faith a little bit more. Yeah, a little bit more, for sure. What, like, drove you to that? Just kind of being, like, confused and, like, just needing guidance or what? what's up? I don't even know. I think it was sort of that. I was just, like, sitting there, and I was like, I wanted to get back into the Bible, and I just mm-hmm. did that again. It was kind of that thing I was saying mentally. When you start thinking that you want to do something, because it's like everything starts with your head. You think something, then you start saying it, and that's how you're going to start acting. So mm-hmm. it's like if you think, well, I'm going to party a whole bunch in college, you just keep thinking that when you're in high school, and then you start saying it to people, well, that's what you're going to end up doing. Yeah. And so when you start thinking of it that way, it it takes time, but you could change. Not, for Not sure. like you, but like you can make your mind change stuff. Not fair. I remember, I, I like you said, like that person has to mentally make that switch. Mm-hmm. I was wondering because like, I grew up in a Christian household, obviously, and but it was like going to church and like my parents forcing me is totally different from like the last three months of me choosing to go to church, yep. me choosing to wake up and the first thing that well, kind of the second I brush my teeth, then I read my Bible. Me choosing to do those stuff is totally different. And it's like it's a deeper connection. Yep. It actually feels like there's a relationship. Exactly. Well, I think when we're younger, and it's kind of like this area too, I feel like people treat it all like a religion, a very rules-based, like, or almost like you're checking a list off. Like, oh, I mm-hmm. went to church on Sunday. Yeah. But when you really sit there and you're like, then you get into the Bible and you realize it's more of a relationship. Mm-hmm. It completely changes it. When you start believing that it's a relationship, mm-hmm. it changes your aspects and the way you view it. Because mm-hmm. it's like you're talking to somebody and like talking to your friend, not yeah. like, oh, I got to do this and this. And you're choosing to go to church. And you're actually learning stuff. And you're like, you're in it, writing down stuff, highlighting mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. And it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> not you cussing after talking about the Bible. <laughs> It's just because it hits so hard, dude. <laughs> like, no, bro. I still be because I can't. I was about to say, you, what did you say in your last podcast? I'm sorry. I'm a cusser. <laughs> so <laughs> like that. I am. I can't help it sometimes. I'm trying to stop. I'm trying to stop. Just because it, it gets so deep. Exactly, like, bro. I feel like, like I can't. Like, you don't truly understand it unless, it unless I drop an F-bomb, you know? Well, I was talking about the Bible. Oh. Uh, but no, yeah. So truly, like, you don't understand that, like, my deep passion of how much I love the Bible, unless I drop my F bond. I have to be like, saying, I freaking love God doesn't hit as much as I love God, you know? Because I do, bro. Like, I was saying, like, it just feels, I feel mad corny sometimes. Because I'm like, bro, like, I used to clown people, bro. Like, if a girl, if I was trying to holler at a girl and she would, like, bring up the Bible, I'm like, yo, this shorty weird as fuck, bro. Sorry. This girl's weird as crap. But now it's like, bro, don't even talk to me unless if you, like, bring up a Bible verse. Like, if I can't, if we're talking about something, uh. and I can't be like, oh, bro, go look at Luke 14.25. Actually, go look at Luke 14.25. It talks about anxiety. If, if I can't say that to you and you take it right, then why are we talking? Like, for yeah. me, if I can't, like, before, the way I used to, like, give people direction and advice was life experience through my life. But my life is fucked up as much as yours. Yeah. So why would I tell you what I did? Why not tell you the greatest thing? The Come word. On. The word. This is the Bible right here, if y'all didn't know. <laughs> but no, yeah, it's just like, I don't know, choosing to have a relationship with him. And that's what it is, choosing yourself, not your parents, not your community, not your friend group nothing but you one day just waking up and saying i'm fucked up and even though i'm fucked up i'm still gonna um, walk well, this path what you're saying is key is a lot of people think they got to be perfect exactly bro to start a relationship with god and that's far it's from the far. that's the that's not even close to the <laughs> yeah truth. like it's honestly when you're the most messed up is when you start getting to god exactly because then you're just like it's honestly when you feel like you get back into a corner and you got nowhere else to go and you turn to him as your last step, and then you're like, you should have been my first one the exactly, whole time. Exactly, bro. And your but life changes, it dude. It changes. And my, I was goofy, bro. I remember I used to be like, God, if you help me through this, I promise I'll never do it again. And he will, like, he will help me through it, and I was just like, 
okay, well, let me go back to it. Yeah. So I was like, hey, I mean, it worked out for the best, so let me just go back. But now, like, I don't know. Like, one day, I literally, what was it? February 19th was, like, the first time I went to church in a fat minute. I think it was February 19th. Yeah. February 19th, I went to church, rescue century. Rescue sanctu- Sanctuary, Samuel. And I was just like, dog, why, 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 like, why, why have I not come? And it just like, it just hits different. Now, especially like, because I choose to wake up that morning and yep. I chose up. Man, I, went, I didn't even just go to, I just didn't go to the service. I went to Bible study before. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm like that. The whole Bible study? I, I'm getting there early. I'm not getting there last minute. I'm getting there like a good five minutes. I'm talking to everyone. I'm like, how's your week? How's la, la. And then I get ready for Bible study. We end Bible study, go to the service. I'm staying after the service, talking to people. I, I'm I'm deep in the church. You I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying to be a youth pastor on the cool. For real? I would love to be a youth pastor. I've always that's always low key been my dream. You know what you need to do is you need to go talk to the person that runs my church. Oh yeah, because like Mike Todd. Fuck you. Yeah, Mike Todd. Go to, go to Tulsa. Yeah, oh, let me just start in Tulsa and ask if I could join, be a youth pastor for do your it. mega church. Do it. Just that. Do just it. Full send it. Say I read your book. Chris, yeah. <laughs> do it, dude. I'm telling you, if he practices what he preaches, he'll give you a shot. And that's on podcast. And that's on podcast. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> nah, dude. I even his actually, see, dude. It's kind of weird. Because Mike's Todd mentor, or yeah, Mike's Todd's mentor is a guy I listen to, and oh, his name is Tim man. Ross. Tim Ross. Tim Ross. Well, they have Tim Ross on on uh, L- at Transformation Church, yeah. TC Nation. Shout out, shout out, my what? church. Because I be watching it every Sunday. Yeah, dude, and I just, dude, I love his church. It's like they be worshiping for hour like oh. over an hour and they just get lost in the worship and i'm just out there on my laptop in wyoming like let's go god <laughs> like, like, <laughs> and i like how relaxed it is like yeah. that was always my biggest thing every time i went to church i always felt like i was being judged i was like all right are my socks the right color are my shoes clean enough are my pants iron enough is my shirt just a wrinkle oh i can't go to church yeah but they're they're just like bro literally come as you are if you well, only got one crock Come with that one crog. And, like, he'll do, like, I don't know, not trying to, like, church judge, but, like, at Lake Point, there's times you're standing, there's times you're sitting, and it's all dictated. And you go to church, like, here, and I'm watching. I want to go in person so bad. That's, yeah. like, my dream. But there'll we be should people. should that as a weekend trip. Oh, that'd be pretty sick. That'd be dope. There'd be people that just walk up there, and they just start crying on their hands and knees, just falling on the ground. People be worshiping on stage. They'll do the same thing. And I'm yeah. like, they are actually, they have a relationship yes. with God. That's the difference between relationship and religion. Yeah. Ooh. Like, really Ooh. wanting to go to church Ooh. and checking off the box. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> <Even> Neil. <laughs> Stop playing with them, bro. But literally, it's just like, I don't know. And, like, I used to, like, even Catholic, I used to be, that's basically what I was, was Roman Catholic. And it's just like. It's the same thing every time. Yes, bro. No emotion. Just feel like, if that's you, that's you. But it was just like. I can't I, see it. It's nah, like. Yeah. I don't know. And maybe they're just very traditional in the aspect. But there's also parts in the Bible where it's like, it shows you how to pray with like the Lord's Prayer. But then he also says, talk to him like a friend. So exactly. it's like. Some people start off their prayer with the Lord's Prayer. Mm-hmm. Or what they'll do is they'll break down, like, what each section of that means and then mm-hmm. kind of pray that in their own way. Mm-hmm. And so it's just more relationshipy. And they, I mean, they just have different um, books in the Bible yeah. than the Christian one does. Or Baptist? What is it considered? That Who? Bible? This? Yeah. I mean, it's just the Holy Bible. What do you mean? On Catholics? Because Catholic Bible is different, right? <sighs> it's not different. They just have... They have uh, more books. Yeah, they just have more books. Yeah. They still go by the Bible, but then they have like the... It's for Book of Wisdom, because mm. my mom just spoke at a funeral. She spoke at the Book of Wisdom, because they were Catholic. Her. And I don't know the other three. No, I, I remember we had like the Holy... I, I forgot what it was. It was a red... Uh, the, the way I remember, it was a red book and a blue book. The red book was just literally like 500 pa- pages of prayers. And the way it was goes, like the head priest, she would be like, turn a page, 250, we're going to read prayers of forgiveness. 
and she'd be like, Lord, forgive me. She would say one part, we'll say back to her, and it'll just go back and forth, back and forth, and we're just reading off a script. And then the blue book was just ha- hymns, which were just songs. Mm. So that's it. And then she would just preach. But then, like, what would she preach about? Whatever. I mean, it was still like a sort of regular preach, but it was just like forty-five minutes, and it was way like to me there wasn't any emotion in it, and it was just like your typical like president like Trump going on a sp- on a spill. She's just like, da, 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 Interesting. That, that, you know, really they been, usually just keep it strictly to the Bible. They don't vary into like bringing real world experience into it. Most of the time, like ninety percent of it is the Bible. Now, like with like Michael Todd mm-hmm. and like Tim Ross, those do be like, so yeah, man, I was swimming and I started drowning. I'm drowning, and it's my my son helped me, and it, it blew my mind because he's the last person I thought it would help me. Just how Jesus is the last part, you know, and they they make it seem like they explain the Bible in a way that's like everyone can hear, like it applies to your everyday life. While Catholic is just strictly strictly the Bible. If you're confused about life, tough shit. Read the Bible and figure it out. Well, I remember one of my favorite services they did. It was like one of my first ones. They had Tim Ross preaching, mm-hmm. and he was saying. Um, he was just talking about blessings, and what he was saying was like, imagine when um, the thousands of people were following Jesus, listening to him preach, and then they get there, and they're like, the disciples were like, you got to send them home, we don't have enough food. And he was like, what do you mean? We got like bread and fish. And they're like, that's not enough to feed everybody. And so he was like, send them down in groups of 50, and um, I think it was 10,000 people, 10,000 or 20,000. It, it was quite a few, but it was yeah. men. So that means each of them, most of them probably had a wife. And then most of them, on average, probably had like two kids. Yeah. So you're probably looking at over 25,000 people. Yeah. And then imagine that he goes and tells like a few to go make groups of 50. And then that would take forever. Mm-hmm. And then he starts to start breaking the bread and the fish and just making them. And then they have to go pass it out one by one to over 20,000 people. And it was kind of like that form of blessings where it's like, you don't know when it's coming to you, but it's going to come to you because yeah. the people in the back were seeing the people in the front get fed, and they're probably like, I don't know if there's going to be enough to make it to me. But if they get fed, everybody was fed to their fuel. Yeah. Fool. But um, And there was leftovers. And there was leftovers. Yeah. But where I was going with that was like when Tim Ross was preaching this, he was walking from one side of the stage, going to grab his fish and bread, walking across the other side of the stage to give it to him, and then he'd walk back to go grab more and back to get more. And it's like you read that book in the Bible or that chapter, and it's probably like maybe a page. But and it's just, you just kind of read it, and it's like, oh, yeah, that was pretty cool. But then somebody's preaching, and they preach it with emotion. And you can see literally like he only made three trips, and it took like five minutes. Yeah. I'm like, sheesh. Not matching like, like, oh my god! I go take a pretty penny, and you just don't really think about it like that till you see it. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, oh, that's pretty cool. It was a different view. Like that's a story told so many times, and then he told it the best way I've ever exactly, seen. Exactly, yeah, exactly. That's how I see, it. and that that's even that's how I like. I did. I will say one thing. I do say I really hate growing up in an African church, but I fucking loved it. Who? Sorry, but I freaking loved it. <laughs> Cause there was just so much passion, bro. Like, think of an African church like Black Baptist on steroids. It is turnt, bro. Like, dude, well, that's pretty crazy. Because yeah. I'm now going to a black church. Yeah. And white church is like white people seasoning. Yeah. <laughs> and then you go to black church. No, like yeah. Black see, people see, even think of like black people seasoning, and even black people would be like, bro. I, sometimes I can't eat African food because it's too spicy for me. See. Exactly. So think of like. Our even our churches is like to me, I think our churches is just so much more amped up, but it still it still has that like checkbox feeling to it. Growing up, it did. Got you. Just because there's so much judgment and like growing up, but that was mainly because everyone knew everyone. So, so what like, religion was that? You said it was, it was Roman so, Catholic. Essentially, it was, it was a denomination off of Roman. It was called Anglican, and that's it's like an African a, Catholic Church. 
it's not necessarily it doesn't necessarily belong to Africa, but it's just a denomination gotcha. off of Roman Catholic. And then the church you went to was all like, well, traditional like African stuff. Yeah, it went it went on gotcha. a the the denomination was on Roman Catholic, but the style we preached on. We um, we sprinkle like African culture in that. Gotcha. So like the music, we um, we sang. We did sing some of the Roman Catholic, like the intro and outro were usually Roman Catholic, but the worship was singed in our native language. Gotcha. And then the preach, whenever he was preaching, he started it off with the Roman Catholic, but then he brought in the culture. And so gotcha. that's why I like. That's why I like it because like it went by the Bible strictly by the Bible. But then he also gave us that real world experience. Gotcha. And so that's why I liked him a lot. And that's why I really enjoyed. I didn't have a beef with the pastor. The pastor was amazing. Dude. I still love him to this day. He was an amazing dude. But the culture of the church was what killed it. And that's usually what, how it is in most churches. Usually a lot of people love to worship. Yeah. But it's the church itself. Like the people in the church that kind of kill it for some people. They're like, you know, I can't come here because of... Sister Mary is blah blah blah, and Sister Janisa is doing this. I'm like, there's like drama in church, yeah. And it's like, why is there drama in church? Exactly. It's like I like I said in my last podcast, it's like it's a high school clique, and like I'm like, why why am I stressing myself to go to a church to a place that's just supposed to make me feel good? But yeah. I'm stressing out, feeling like I'm finna get bullied if I'm wearing Mitch Matt socks or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, I just ended up stop going, and then now even the church I go to now. The Patrick's Ebo, which is my native culture, and um, he he preached only in American. I say in American in English, <laughs> <laughs> but it's still like you can still see the passion when he talks, yeah. and that's why I like it. I'm just like dope dude. He, I think you know Chica. She ran track. You be talking about her about like a lot. So yeah, bringing her like trying to remind me of her, but I knew of her. Yeah, yeah but yeah, that's her. Shout out to Chica. <laughs> But now, yeah, church is awesome, bro. Church is awesome. God is awesome. Great things come from God. It's just simple as that. <laughs> simple as that. Simple so as that, that. that's the part because we should have just started and ended it like that. Great things come from God. All right, at the end. Deuces. Deuces. <laughs> but before we go, how long are we going on? I think we're doing good. Yeah, how long has this been? It's been like a good 57 minutes. We've been talking for an hour. No, yeah. But before we go, I wanted the last thing I want to talk about is something we're both going through, like is relationships, and then we just skedaddle. But yeah, what is your relationship like? For like, uh, I know it's non-existent. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. non-existent. <laughs> but it was different because, like I was saying earlier, I moved there to Wyoming, and I think I just learned a lot about relationships in general, friendships, dating relationships. <laughs> I think that was kind of. When I went to college, I was focusing so much on that. Mm-hmm. And I just wasn't. It was like, talk about in, in his book, relationship goals. This generation is very big on like casual dating, not intentional dating. Mm-hmm. But casual dating has like horrible side effects. It'll still affect you. Like, because relationships are toxic nowadays. And it always comes from both parties. But I think I was just not doing good mentally. And then coming out here allows me time to just kind of be fully by myself and i just learned a lot about relationships in that way because like i want somebody now that like has a relationship with god that's crucial and then somebody that can communicate that's one thing that's been unreal yeah. people can't talk nowadays or just have a simple conversation or carry a conversation yeah. but until i find something like that and somebody that was, has a relationship with god and like I'm doing so much right now. I don't even want a relationship with anybody like that. But I learned a lot about them because I'm like really getting time alone to analyze all the decisions I've made. And then also seeing friendships like a lot of the guys back home or in College Station, we talk here and there, but it's not like they, nothing against, like it's almost like they don't care. And then I'll be talking to like you and Jordan, and but y'all care. Like there's, it's like noticing who your real friends are. Mm-hmm. That makes me realize, like, when parents don't have a lot of friends, when you're younger, you're like, why don't you have a lot of friends? Yeah, freaking loners. Yeah, and it's like quality over quantity. Yeah, for sure. And if you got, like, a solid three friends, you're cooking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, low-key. I feel like I feel like I have a lot. And 
even whenever I'm in the, I don't know, I did post this one, but I was saying the only reason, truth, truthfully, the only reason that I'm alive to this day is that I had a freaking killer support group with you, Morgan, Kyra, like y'all three. Like whenever I was like going through my suicide and deep depression shit, like the very second like y'all saw I was in the hospital, like I wasn't doing good. Y'all didn't even hesitate. Like y'all didn't waste like three people. Three people can change your life. Yep. Y'all weren't bullshitting. Y'all didn't do nothing. Y'all weren't like, hey, let's just call them. Like you're like, shut the fuck up. Come to the gym. Come over. We're working out. Yep. Morgan was just like, sorry. Morgan was just like, bro, shut the fuck up. Like you know I love you. You know I'm here. Yeah. Same thing for Kyra. And it was just like that was whenever I was just like I was in my darkest moment. I'm just like, dude, where where is everyone? Like where where's all the people I turn up with? Where's all the people I drink? Where's all the people I smoked with? Where's all the girls I slept with? Like where where is everyone? Yeah, those and people disappear. So fast. They don't realize that. Like and that's the same that's the reason going all the way back to the party and stuff. Yeah. It's like people think these friendships last and it's like no yeah like you don't show up to drink with them one weekend you're out the cliff exactly and then like people might get offended by that that's just how it is like nobody cares like if you actually take the time to make a relationship then it'll be good but until you do stuff like that you don't have like when people in that situation it's like you need to take time to yourself for sure and it's super important and it kind of sucks that like you have to go through bad situations to find out who your real friends are yeah but it's just like it's not like if you go through a bad situation pe- certain people aren't there that doesn't mean they're fake and like burn them at the stake like it's those same with trials but it just means y'all might have to be acquaintance or even at, at the end of the day they're probably going through something you don't even know yeah and y'all both going through hell at the same time and both y'all can be there for each other because y'all are both just you can only do so much at once well, kind of like what you're saying, the acquaintance is key because, like, it's like I have a few best friends. Like, you know more about me than most people I know. Like, you know more about me than my actual brother. And then, but then you have your like your good friends, which pretty much know just about everything. And then yeah. you have like your acquaintances, where it's like you're cool with them. They're awesome to go talk to, hang out with, yeah. but you're not gonna. Like, Change your schedule for them at last minute. Type shit. Yeah, not like it's just different. Yeah. And there's just different stages of everything. And some people just try to have a whole bunch of best friends. Mm-hmm. And then it ends up being real fake. And you can't dive in. Because a best friend relationship is practically a relationship. People mm-hmm. don't. Uh, yeah. <laughs> people don't realize that. <laughs> that is like. You're literally dating your best friends. Pretty much. If, yeah. Like if they're truly your best friends and you can go talk to them about stuff like that, you have to be able to communicate with people. That's what people lack nowadays. Mm-hmm in relationships so it's definitely different and people can't you can't have multiple because then it's like can't dive in or that many because you can't have that deep of relationships with so many people Mm -hmm. Facts. it's definitely interesting it was one thing too i was praying about with like friendships i go over to wyoming and like cheyenne that dude's sick if i went up there i didn't know anybody in wyoming and now i've been working out with him been seeing a lot of games in the gym um, been able to travel, hang out with him. And so it's kind of another, like, it's another friendship. And now it's like, okay, if there's, if he ever has any connections and go that way. But it was like, I was praying, I was praying for a few things in October and it was praying that I get out of college station. I was praying I can get a better friend group. And then none of it was happening. And then finally all came together then. And I don't know, it was like, um, we were talking about God earlier and how, Dude, everything happens for a reason. Yeah. And I, the only reason I met Aaron is because I was in a real toxic relationship when I was at Blinn. And then after I got out of that relationship, I started hanging out with Aaron. And then that went a whole year to the um, when I moved to Wyoming. And it was seeing how God turned, like, one of the worst moments of my life when I was in my deepest depression. Or I don't remember if it was a depression, but, like, deep, like, I was not doing good. Because I weighed 140 pounds then. I lost so much weight. Mm-hmm. And then that led to me meeting the person that put me on where I'm at right now. Yeah. Crazy stuff. And then, once again, I'm trying to go back to God, but, like, it's going to happen at a time. You prayed it. You said you prayed last year in October. And it was October, November, January, February, March. You went No, you went in February. Well, when did you meet um, 
homeboy. I keep on forgetting. Cheyenne? Yeah, when did you meet Cheyenne? Was it like... The, that was in like February. It was like whenever we started. But what I was going to say real quick, though, was when I was dating that one girl and all this stuff was going down, I would did not have a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And there's this picture I've been seeing on Instagram where you see uh, two footprints in the sand. And then there's a section you see one footprint in the sand. And the two, you know, is God and you. And the other one, the person's like, why, where were you, God? You weren't there for me. And he was like, no, I was carrying you. And he was the one footprint. Ah. And he was holding you. And so it was like that time I was pushing God far away. Yeah. I didn't want anything to do with him. And then it went. he carried me that whole way to that and now where I'm at right now. Yeah. I'm like thriving. Yeah. Like now I'm 185 pounds. Probably the first time I've weighed more than you in a while. Yeah. And then... It's pretty crazy yeah. stuff, dude. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. And then it's cool talking to like in blue collar too, we were talking about like they're harder, it almost seems like. Like harder people is why I look at social media different, but I feel like they also look at God differently. And so it's cool because I'm in a place now where I can talk about God in a place that I feel like God's not at a lot. Like a lot of, they're not saying anything bad, but like some people have come up to me and had serious conversations about it where I can talk to him. That's a good feeling. It is. That's well, a good feeling. Because my one buddy, Jeffrey, he's 18, and he's like telling me I was going to be doing all this stuff his whole life. I'm like, no, there's going to come a day. And he's like, no. And I'm like, there will be. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not going to force it on you. Yeah. Because if I force it on you, you're just going to keep, it's going to be farther. Yeah. But I'm like, there's going to be a day probably when you're super broke and you don't know what's going to happen. You're going to, God's going to show up. Yeah. <laughs> or you're going to realize. It's pretty cool. It's interesting. That's the best feeling. Whenever you just get to sprinkle a little word of God into someone, yep. just plant that seed. And, like, the thing about, like, that, um, Gemma, my friend at Box, uh -huh. we were talking. One of her friends was, like, going through something. And Gemma was trying to give her advice. And her friend was like, why are you always talking about God to me? Like, I want something else. And then Gemma was like, how should I do? How should I handle this? And I was like, honestly, continue to do what you're doing. Keep on planting those seeds. Because... You may not see her grow, but if you plant that seed today, 10 years later, that seed might start growing solely yeah. because you were the only one that talked to her about it, which is the same thing as Chica. Chica's been telling me since, like, we were in high school to come to her dad's church. Did it turn off? No. Oh. Good. Chica's been telling me since, oh, I want to make sure that was still on, but it is. I can see the, it's recording. Yeah, I think it might die pretty soon. You think? Maybe. What's on the bottom left? Is that the battery? I oh, don't know, you dickhead. That means it's recording. Oh, just making, I'm <laughs> making sure you're paying <laughs> attention. No, but she's been telling me since high school that, like, sophomore year, maybe sophomore year of high school, I should come to her dad's church. And then, what, two weeks ago, two weeks, this, two weeks ago, I got baptized at her dad's church. That's since crazy. high school, she's been planting that seed, watering it attending to it. and it's not like she talks to me every single day but like she'll pop up and like hey how you doing blah 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 okay and like that was a beautiful thing she wasn't forcing it she wasn't whenever i had questions i could always go to her with no judgment right and so like that's the most important thing i feel like a lot of christians like whenever i see those videos of people like worshiping on a plane and i'm like I, I understand you're supposed to spread god's word but like bro i promise you the last way you're going to get someone to come to jesus is whenever they're trying to fall asleep because they have a business trip and now you're waking them up, a baby's crying. The last thing they're thinking of is, God saved me. No, God just ruined my $10 million deal because I can't get no sleep. And yeah. I have bags under my eye. So it's like, there's a time and place for everything. Yeah. No, you can uh, keep going. No, so yeah, I just think planting seeds, even the people that are like, nah, Jesus is not with me. If you could just say, just like, yeah, no, yeah. I mean, just drop a like one Bible verse. 10 years later, they might trip and fall, scrape their knee. It's like, and they just look up and there's it's rainy and they just see like a little glimpse and they just see like, like God, help me. And then they just think of Chris Bigum and welding. And then like, I mean, that really, how it was for me, like I was just down bad. And I just thought about one thing. And I was just like, let me just go to church, bro. And I yeah. just went, I just went to Chica's church. And I was just like, I'm like, why, why have I been running? Yeah. Like why you like you said, like you're you did everything to push God away. Everything. But it was like he kept on coming back and it's like, bro, if you're gonna if you're trying this hard, like damn bro, I'm I'm let me let me see what he's up to. Yeah. Cause I feel like I did everything. 
Like there was like, especially when you do something and you know you're not supposed to do it, you don't want to feel that guilt. So like, it makes no sense. But for me, it was like I don't want to feel guilty, so I'm gonna dive even more into the guilt. So instead of it feeling guilty, I'm gonna play myself and say this is what I want and yeah. I'm not guilty. And so like that's all the blah blah blah. I'm not gonna put all my business out there. But everything I did, everything, and I still didn't feel good. I was just like, all right, bro. Right, let me give you a shot. I gave him a shot, and it was switch, switch, switch. <laughs> oh, net. So yeah, I didn't mean to go back to God, but like, but ah, Jesus, I'm cussing. You. What are you doing, dude? I'm sorry, bro. I told you You're I can't get help. on me earlier. Yeah, and you <laughs> want to keep doing it. <laughs> but now, like, I don't know. You, there's a timing for everything. I know, like, like you said, communication with relationships, dude. If you learn how to talk to God. Talking to humans is so much easier because God barely talks to you. God will just sprinkle something. Like you say, you asked for him in October, and it came through four months later. Yeah. So if you could talk to God and work through that communication with God, then talking to humans would be ten times easier. Yeah, I can't do it at all. <laughs> talk to humans? <laughs> yeah, just have it with the right humans, bro. I'm telling you. Like, I'm not going to put her name, but uh, I wish there was a way I could talk in code. But, like, I think El Paso. Uh, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's great. Uh, communication, with communication, bro. We're just like, what are you trying to say? <laughs> Tell no, me. yeah. <laughs> but no, like, I don't know. This is right timing. I feel like, and like, one thing I read. And I, I'm kind of, I feel like I'm in that phase with relationships is that um, I'm always saying, like, I need to fix myself before I get into a relationship, which is true. You need to fix most of the things you want. But don't forget, while you're fixing yourself, the person that's meant to that's meant to be with you, you're leaving them high and dry in the world. The sort w- of. Because you also got to yeah. think, when Adam made Eve... I think in the Bible it said, like, at first it was Adam, mm-hmm. and then God made Eve for Adam, mm-hmm. which also implies that God made you somebody. Mm-hmm. So there's, there's building processes, and I think the key is to not be thinking, oh, I'm leaving my person high and dry, because they be on the same thing as you. Mm-hmm. The key is to be praying for them. And pray, like, God, whoever my soulmate is, get them through whatever they're going mm-hmm. through. Please help me become the best person I can be for them. And then you just start developing, they start developing, and then boom. At some point, you'll find somebody. Because there's somebody for you. Because, like, especially our overthinking selves, <laughs> there's somebody that could process. Like, part of it is we should be able to process and be okay enough with stuff. But it's also knowing, like, with two people that overthink, and then we will try to get a girlfriend that goes out every night. That's not, that don't work. <laughs> that is not add up. <laughs> Bro, the imagination we have is, we can even make up some crazy Dr. Seuss books with oh, our imagination. Sure. My girl could be next to me, and I could be thinking she's cheating on me. Dude. And I'm uh, just like, what just happened? What is and it's just mental terror. Yeah. But it's just me just being immature. Yeah. And then so until I can get that fine, which I've never gone that extreme, but like, until I can get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just let, 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 make that clear. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, until I can get my brain locked down and mature enough and then be with the, like, be in the right mindset and go with, like, like I was saying earlier, the, instead of just casual dating, but, like, the, um, dating with a purpose. Yeah. So. Looking for somebody and just, no, setting boundaries, too. Mm-hmm. I think people nowadays are like, oh, we're dating, we can go have sex. It's like, no. God, in the Bible, the only thing that, consummates marriage is when he consummated and then it's official nowadays in culture they think oh you go sign some papers now you're married Mm -hmm. no that's not how god views it so theoretically whoever you've had sex with in god's eyes you're married to him and then in the bible divorce is the biggest sin you can do and so it's just like dang but even with all that time god still carries yeah it is crazy when you really think about it and you go in that way, it's different. I kind of went off track, but. Nah, you went where it needed to go. You go. 
Oh, bro. Oh, dude. I feel like we could talk about this for hours. Oh, for we sure. We could easily talk about this for hours. We might have to do part two. Sunday. No, we definitely do in a part two. What do you call it? You come back. Part two Sunday? Sunday? Do you Sunday? want to? I'm down. I'm down. Yeah, because this has been an hour episode. Oh, yeah, a little bit over an hour. All right, man. Shit, sure, part two Sunday. Part two Sunday. Yeah. Adios, amigos. <laughs> They knew I took the bigger out It's me, myself, and I